You can expect three things in this video today. The first one is gonna be the weekend sales. I'm gonna take you through all the items that sold, show you what they're going to sell for, and hopefully that can help you source the right items. Then we're gonna go into the thrift store, and I've had a massive collect out of just the one store, and I can't wait to show you everything that I've been able to pick up. And then the third thing that we're gonna go into are four numbers that are really gonna help your rebound business in 2022. So the four numbers that I believe you should be focusing on. If we pull up the numbers to give you a look at the weekend sales, we had a total of $793 come through an overall profit after fees and post of uh, 380 bucks. So a little bit of an average old weekend. Uh, it's been a bit of a slow start to 2022, as I'll show you guys a little bit later in the video, but let's go dive into the first category that I always like to kick off with, the shoes. So we had a total of six pairs of shoes sell over the weekend, a total of $280 in revenue. Uh, works out to about $47 per sale. The first one that we'll kick things off with are just a very cheap purchase that I made in the thrift store. These Pegasus Nike running shoes, um, they've sold for $25, but I only bought them for $2 in the thrift. So the profit is still certainly there on that sale. Um, these as well, we've got the New Balance Fuel Cell Men's Running Shoes, a really cool colorway. I do like picking up the brand new balance. It seems to do well for me. A $40 sale price on those ones there. Paid about 10 in the thrift for those. And then we've got these as well. We've got the Space Jam Paul George Basketball Shoes. These are a seven youth and I don't typically buy the smaller sizes, but I'm still able to get that one done for $40 as well. I've got three others. Um, these are the, probably the best of the bunch. So let's jump into this one for you now. This is the pair of Macbeth uh, casual shoes, skateboarding shoes. Comes from Tom DeLong, the lead singer of Blink-182. I'm always picking up this shoe whenever I'm seeing it. Actually sold for $48.95 plus $35 worth of international postage. It's off to France, believe it or not. So a really good sought after brand if you can find it. I've only paid the eight and the thrift, so I've made a pretty good profit on those. Um, another one as well here is OnCloud. I've ended up selling the OnClouds. These have sold for 50 bucks, but the issue was uh, the sole. So there was a little chip, as you can see right here, little chip on the sole. So I've had to reduce the price on these. You can typically get upwards of 90 to 100 bucks for those. Um, but with the sole damage, I've ended up going with 50 and we still got the sale done. I've got one more shoe for you here as well. Just a pair of Connies, some high top Connies, plain black, really good sole. Um, size four though, I think, uh, a really small size, which again, I don't typically buy too much. Uh, but we've got a $42.50 sale price on these ones. These came through a consignment deal. So I actually haven't put any money down to get my sale on this one. And uh, with the split of the profits, I should be able to still make a few dollars. We're gonna have a look at the DVDs that have sold next. And excuse the mess, I'm very sorry about that. I should have cleaned that up beforehand. That needs to go into there. Um, but we've got some DVD sales. So uh, the DVDs that moved, we had a $12.50 sale price here with the Marilyn Manson Lest We Forget CD. Uh, this was one of my ones that I picked up in that video where I scanned for DVDs and there was all these DVDs that I ended up picking up for a dollar each and they were all selling for about 15 to 20 bucks on eBay. So this was one of them, sure, $13.50 of a sale price. That was epic. And then the Whitlam's as well. We've ended up selling that one for $15. So a couple of little winners there in the DVDs and the CDs, but uh, it has been a fairly quiet weekend in this category. I also had two tops that sold over the weekend as well. This one I've had an absolute mare on. It was a Sydney Swans training singlet. I normally sell these for about $30. For some reason, I priced it for $12.10. I bought it for $8 in the thrift, so I don't know what I was thinking, but sure enough, a quick sale on this one, and I've made absolutely nothing on it. Uh, the other one as well that I've got for you is this Ralph Lauren size extra large pink and blue long sleeve polo shirt. I think it was a $28.95 sale price for this one. I paid $8 for it in the thrift, but I'm not typically typically buying these too much more because there's quite a bit of time to list the item up, a lot of measurements that you've got to go through, and you're not typically making a lot of profit at the end of the day. So I've stopped doing these, but we did get a quick sale on this one, $28.95, not too bad. Back into the storage room, and I'll have a look at the shorts section with you now. We've had three sales come through in the pants and the shorts. The first one here I got off a good mate of mine. Uh, very generous of him to allow me to grab some of his old clothing items. Uh, this was a French Connection pair of pants and they ended up selling for $25. I did pay him $5 per item that I bought off him. So uh, a $17.50 plus post his sale price. Not the end of the world there. Not a bad little result. Uh, the Gold Coast Suns as well. My old footy club that I used to spend a bit of time working for. Uh, we've got an extra large here in the, in the Suns shorts. So um, $25 was the sale price on them. And then we've also got these as well. Some Mambo board shorts that I've had a sell 
through rate of 551 days. So definitely go, don't uh, go ahead and pick these ones up. 32 waste. I've sold them for $17.50 just to get them out the door. Uh, would have paid $5 for them in the thrift a year and a half ago. Unbelievable stuff. So three items there in the clothing section. Just some very quick bread and butter winners. For now, we did have a sale, and that was these Robin Hobb books. So two paperbacks uh, from the author Robin Hobb. Generally sells pretty well. I've sold this author a number of times. Um, I have pretty much stopped all book sales. So as you can see here, they are all listed, but not typically selling because I'm not listing books up at the moment. Um, but these sold for $28.95. So easy one to ship out. That'll go into a small satchel, bit of bubble wrap around it. Uh, we've probably, well, I bought them for a dollar each. So $2 in for a $28.95 sale price. Um, just a good author to be looking out for if you're doing the books. And then the other random MISC product that I had sell was the Dymo Label Writer. So this is the 450, the one that I've used for my postage labels, but I've upgraded to the larger Excel version. So this has just been lying around. So I, I thought I'd just list it up and sell it. Don't even know what I paid for it. I did pay in full at Officeworks originally, but I got a $65 sale price plus $20 worth of international postage. Uh, for this guy here. So there's probably no true profit made, but it's just nice to get some money back on an item that I'm no longer using. Just dropped off the post. Um, look, a fairly average old weekend worth of sales, but I'm always still very thankful for anything that does come through. So happy to drop that one off and uh, keep charging on with this big Monday that we've got ahead of us. Just at my local thrift store now, and I really want to show you what we're dealing with here on an early January uh, sort of a run here. A lot of people dropping off their stuff in the thrift. Let me show you here. Have a look at that. They are just being inundated with donations at the moment so much in there so i really do think that there's an opportunity for us to jump into this thrift store and hopefully come away with a stack of profits so let's jump in there now and we'll see what we can find Well guys, my thoughts have definitely been realized. We have got a number of Bolo DVDs here to pick from. I'm yet to go to the shoe section, haven't even checked out the clothing, nor even the plush toys that I would always have a bit of a look in. There is just too much opportunity in these DVDs. Have a look at the collection that I've been able to build so far, but it's not over. There's still a ton more that I'm gonna be adding to this cart. I'm absolutely blown away by this. In the end, 60 DVDs have been purchased. I've paid almost pretty much $2 a piece, but the resale value, which I will show you a little bit later on in the video, um, is just some unbelievable profits. So it's just been an unbelievable grab here. Only the one store, I won't be going to any others today because I did spend quite a bit of time sifting through this one. Um, but geez, sometimes you only need to do the one store. There is a ton of profit coming out of this one. Oh my goodness, guys. They say timing is everything. And we have come away with a bag. There's probably a thousand dollars there. <laughs> oh man, that was like Christmas morning. I'm inundated with quality, quality DVD TV series, which is a huge category to have a look at. I spent $105. I don't know if it's quite a $1,000 worth of resale value, but definitely over 500 bucks, put it that way. An absolutely huge haul there. Uh, I've only done the one op shop. I haven't even bothered to go to any others because it is a little bit later in the day now. I did spend quite a bit of time in there with those DVDs alone. Um, and I really want to bring you these numbers for you guys to consider for your eBay business this year to have some success. So let's get the whiteboard out back at home and um, I'll give you some numbers to consider. Um, and I'll also at the end of the video now, let you know just how much these DVDs are actually worth. All right, so there are there are four numbers that you're going to need for your eBay business this year to kind of help project what you're trying to achieve throughout the year. And everyone's going to be different. All your numbers are going to be different, but they are the four same numbers for everybody to work on. So the first one that you need to be looking at this year is how many items you're going to list on a daily basis. So that number is going to be different for everybody, obviously, but just work out based on your time commitments, how many items you can list on average 
on a daily basis. So that's the first figure that you need to work out. The next two figures I can give you some guidance on if you don't have the data already there from some, maybe some past sales. But the first one that you need is an average sale price. Now eBay can let you know what that average sale price is pretty quickly. Um, and then from a, an average sell through rate perspective, what that refers to is how many items you list up versus how many items you actually go on to sell. So a really easy calculation of that is just have a look at your 90 day total. Just see how many items you've sold versus how many listings you've actually got there. And that will be a really good indication of what your sell through rate is. Now, I think a really good guide to work off for both of those figures would be maybe $35 to $40 for an average sale price. Remember, that's obviously going to be very different for, for everybody depending on what you sell. But if it's flea market, thrift store, or garage sale type items, $35 to $40 worth of sale price on average is pretty much industry standard, I would imagine. If you're selling high-end goods, it might be a whole lot more than that. Um, the other figure as well is sell-through rate. I think a really good guide to work off if you yet to sell anything is probably 50%. I think if you can have double the amount of listings but, uh, per what you have actually sold, I think that's a pretty good way to say that you're on the right track from a, a sell-through rate perspective. So um, the other two figures, for me in 2022, my goals is to hold a $40 average sale price and then to achieve a 65% sell-through rate. So here's my little accountability calendar that I've put in place for 2022. And I've given you two, or I've given you three numbers to work on, but I haven't given you the fourth. And that is the total revenue that you can expect to make. So the way to work it out is to simply go by the number of listings you anticipate to do per day, you want to times that by 365. That's going to give you the total number of listings. So for me, it's 5,475 listings if I was to do my 15 listings per day. Then you want to divide that, or sorry, times that by 65% or times by 0.65. That's gonna work out how many listings you actually anticipate to go on to sell. And then from there, you times that number by $40 worth of an average sale price. That will achieve $140,000 in my example. Now, those four numbers that I've just described there, they can be all different, but they're always gonna work out to what your uh, total revenue can be expected to be. So hopefully that makes sense. I know there's a lot of different numbers there, but as long as you're working on those four numbers that I've just gone through there, you can really get a good gauge on what you can expect at the end of the year. And it really does come down to the first thing, which is how many listings are you gonna do on a daily basis? Now, for me, I've got a bit of a track running record here for January listings. I've done 103 listings in just 10 days. And if I'm trying to do 15 a day, that should really be 150 listings. So I know that I'm 47 listings behind where I wanna be for the end of the year. So I need to get uh, cracking and list a few more items. The other one as well is my sales. I've done 60 sales out of 103. So that's about 58, 59% worth of a sell-through rate. And it's it's a good sell-through rate, but remember to achieve 140,000 with the number of listings that I'm doing, I need to be hitting 65% worth of a sell-through rate. So both of these numbers 10 days in tells me already that I'm actually under where I need to be to achieve my $140,000 goal. So it's a really, really good account accountability calendar. One, to make sure that you're just listing up every day, which is a huge priority. But it also lets you know by these two figures, if you're actually on track to achieve that goal that you set for yourself at the start of the year. So hopefully that all made sense. Hopefully those numbers do help guys. Let me know in the comments if you found that useful. Um, I do want to jump into these DVDs now because I have worked on some price points. I've checked the comps. I've got back home. I've laid it all out for your convenience here. Let's just start down the end here. I've got some TV series basically. If you take note of this, they're only one off. So I've got a season three there. I've got Paradise season two. They actually still add up to some good money on eBay. I can expect $15 there, 12 there. You'll see across the board here that all these TV seasons are sort of around that $15 price point. Continuing with the TV series here, like over there, that can expect 20 bucks on that one. So what you're looking for in the thrift is multiple discs. That's a really quick indication that you found a TV series. And generally you can expect the comps to be a little bit higher than a movie, for instance. So um, Alien Quadrilogy at $30. I've sold that so many times before. I know that will go for $30. These are two series that I've never heard of, but we've got series one, two, and three, and we've got the complete ripping yard. So anytime you can see the word complete on any DVD, you can expect some good money there as well. So they should work out well. And then up here, oh, first of all, Hamish and Andy, I've got five uh, different um, travel series there. $10 a piece, 50 bucks as a bundle. Um, Billy Connolly, some comedic uh, sort of DVDs go pretty well, 30 there. The Tudors, these are all sort of multiples. So we've got Broadchurch, 
the Paradise and the Tudors, multiple seasons going for sort of 20 bucks plus, 35 there for Broadchurch. Uh, but these are the three real winners, guys. I'm going to kick things off with Grand Designs, $120 worth of value. If you can find every single one of these seasons brand new condition, it sells for $600 on eBay, probably the biggest Bolo DVD I've ever found in the thrift in multiples. Um, for nine seasons worth, I can expect about 120. Um, we've got the X-Files here, uh, 11 seasons in total. I've got eight plus a little extra one here. I can expect about 65 on that. And then Alias, $50. So guys, I've had an absolute huge run here. I've spent $105 for everything you can see. And uh, I checked the discs, all in good quality. And I can let you know that the total resale value on eBay is eight or oh, six hundred and eighty three dollars. I did just want to take a moment to say thanks for the support over the last few weeks, especially over the Christmas break. We had some tremendous viewership take place. Even though I wasn't posting videos, I was really nervous to not post a video. It's the first time in a year and a half where I just took a break from uh, from YouTube and um, the, the viewership still remained pretty consistent and the subscriber numbers grew as well. So if you're new to the channel, if you're watching this sort of for the first time, consider hitting the subscribe button because I'm back to consistent content putting out three new videos around eBay growth every single week. So hopefully you can get some value throughout this year. And for everybody else that is subscribed, remember to smash the like button for me too, guys, because it's a huge way to pump me up in the algorithm and keep that growth going. We've got a big, big year ahead on this channel. Um, if you guys missed last week, or actually a couple of weeks ago now, the video where I sifted through some DVDs and I actually found a whole heap by scanning every single one in a thrift store. I'm gonna leave that video right here for you guys to check out. We've got our first trip to the thrift video of the year coming for you guys on Thursday. I'm very looking forward to seeing what we can find then. Uh, look forward to catching you soon, guys. Appreciate you being here. We'll see you soon.